Good afternoon, I'm Nick D for VIS. Welcome to episode 9 of a Reichsmas 3 Ukraine series. Last time we left off, we've entered 1963, so there's a very good chance this episode things will start heating up. Uh, but who is to blame? That being said, what even is common ground? We do not have a unified group. The newcomers blaming all our woes upon Coke's system, a system whose veterans engorge upon it and make sure it never changes to their advantage. They have the leverage but lack the momentum and the rabble rousing the new generation has. An unmovable wall meets an unstoppable object, and until we find a, uh, com a unified enemy, we'll only be left to watch the fireworks. And we'll get another attack again, and I'll see you guys once we get that. Uh, actually, no, I'll, let me say, uh, since last video, I, I realized that having, like, these little breaks in between, like, in between focuses, like what I've done in previous years, is a lot better than just me sitting around. But, uh, of course, I'll unpog for any relevant event, but I'll see you guys once we get this. Okay, we got another attack again. Representative Bratagam, you may speak. Thank you, Minister. Dear members of the Security Council, I'd like to begin my speech with a brief overview of the incident which happened just yesterday in the Turchesk Sea region. That day, a major bandit raid occurred, resulting in the death of 19 brave soldiers, 7 officers, and 8 high ranking officials. We must all remember the sacrifice in the name of the Vaterland. Uh, in the name of the Vaterland, of course, it is insane to think that an unjust treatment of entire nations become, uh, become a sacrifice in the name of my country. Uh, young German men now die in a fight, uh, die here in a fight that they didn't choose. It's even more insane, however, uh, that a majority in this room aren't willing to do anything about it. Um, sorry, I got an email from my law class, but uh, and despite claiming to care about their brothers, brave sons and brothers. Can't they see that it is impossible to simply extinguish the will of the people to be free as all the North believes, or expect that they will be obediently accept uh, oppression as Lee Brown hopes? The right way, the only way, is to allow the Slavs to join us in a quest to rebuild and heal this land. I will make sure we follow that way. We must. This, I believe, has come to the result of the absence of real reforms, which should have been implemented at least partially by the Security Council, leading to anti-Reich sentiment among the local populace and the Reich Schmitzer grow. Only meaningful, fruitful reforms can ensure that one of, that the, one of our fears' greatest conquests remains stable. I hope that my concerns will be heard. Thank you. It's a shame, really, that not anyone could, everyone could see the truth. We'll see, quote, we'll get the event, quote the crow forevermore. And now let's get, let's walk the eggshells. When examining the state of Ukraine, it is obvious that there does exist a place for national socialism should objective facts be properly accepted and integrated into official policy. Rejecting it entirely or embracing its more extreme particulars will not serve its population or the future. No middle ground clearly must be found. A centrist path that acknowledges the future place a properly integrated native population represents uh, and an objectively correct future state and must be pursued. There's only one way forward indeed. And uh, this will give no event, so I'll see you guys once we finish it, or as always, if we get a relevant event. Okay, we got this event called the Target. Peter, Peter von Norden was bent down to the fields around his bent down into the fields around his home, a rifle shaking in his hands. The wind was blowing hard and stalks of grain blew in and out of his view. He stared down the barrel of his gun and took a shot at the haystack. It whizzed past the haystack into the forest beyond. A bad shot, a murder of crows burst from the foliage. Uh, Pega, Peter began to speak, his hands still firmly pressed around the rifle. My aim is weak today. My skills have dulled since the war in Thonia. The partisan threat is real. I need to hone my skill once more. Do not distract me. Uh, Antonia bent towards her husband, frowning. Peter, this land isn't safe. Without Kalkan Hitler to contain the Ukrainians, they're forming armies. Uh, the council is considering evacuating this entire region. You must know that your riflery cannot save your farm. You can be the best shot in Ukraine, and that still couldn't. Finally, Peter's eyes gave a slight glance toward his wife, as if a house fight. Antonia, that is enough, he said coldly. This is far beyond your station. A Wehrbauer is a steadler, an Aryan individual with the will to move mountains. I can do all that the Reich requires, or I deserve nothing. His, his feet shifted in the muddy dirt below him. He turned towards the target and fired off another shot. And missed once more. Okay, we have the event, quote, the crow forevermore. If you don't know, that's a reference to, um, it's Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Poe, I'm blanking right now, but the NOC headquarters was a buzz with activity. The employees of Hiramus Gar Gargantuan Kalgamer awaited the day on which their namesake patron would show his face at their door, eager to praise their progress and reward them sumptuously for it. 
Uh, Hiramo, Hiramo was indeed a generous god, a man who backed all of the right men at the right times, a visionary, a prophet, a mastermind, that is what he, they all said, I told them, and to a certain extent, he believed. He did indeed have a knack for attaching himself to success stories. Hello, workers of the Kursan plant. I've come here to discuss both your and your other's progress. Let us not keep bated breaths of such. You have done extremely well. Production is up. Output has been superb. And you've all clearly uh, been putting in your best. The crowd kindly accepted plaudits with cheers. Now, to the rest. It's a similar story across Ukraine, yet there could be so much more. Yes, it's true. Ukraine has not brought the opportunities it should. Bad policy hurts everyone, and frankly, Ukraine has a lot of that to go around. Only one man has said anything about the subject, and that one only, mo only man is Hans Otto Brotkam. That man is the company's greatest ally. He believes in a freer Ukraine, one where people like us, entrepreneurs, can seize the reins of society and drive into the future. He doesn't uh, believe in cumbersome regulations to please, ge please Germania's bureaucrats, nor is some tool of the Kiev establishment. I say this to you so that you may understand the stakes of reasoning behind who is in power at Kiev, because it affects you just as much as me. They all clap politely and were confused. This will increase uh, Brotkam's support among the industrialists pretty massively to the point where uh, the nation now bends to Brothergun's will, will, so we'll try to do that. And, uh, yeah, thankfully during the Civil War, we'll get some decisions to raise it up for Ollendorf. But I'll see you guys once we get this. Okay, we got another event called One Single Spark. There was a spark in the atmosphere that Hanea hadn't felt in a very long time. At any other point, Dan Leo would tell her that she was just uh, being jittery, but everything was different now. Everyone had heard about Poland, and everyone knew what it could mean. The atmosphere everywhere was changed, fear and uncertainty in the eyes of Germans, excitement and hope in the eyes of everyone else. All of Ukraine was holding their breath, waiting to see what would happen next. You know what this means, uh, she uh, told them over breakfast. If Germany has lost control of Poland, if their strangle is broken, then their power is broken, and they know it. She couldn't help the excitement spilling in her voice, emotions, long suppressed rising to the surface. Ostland, Ukraine, even Moscow, and they're afraid that it, it might be over. If there was ever a time the Reich could fall, she trailed off as if finishing the sentence would somehow prevent its manifestation. There was some uh, hesitance, a fear that this would end in doomed fertility, and hope was an illusion. Yet the expression on her husband's face was almost serene, and with a hint of uncertainty, he smiled. It's 1917 again, he finally said, his voice must musing. Even it ends the same as before, I don't think there is a better year to repeat. Tyrants cannot be unchallenged forever. She strongly agreed and hoped that Poland was the first domino that would send the German Empire crashing down. If it fell, perhaps someday, something better could rise in its place. Throughout the rest of the day, her smile never faded. The faint embers of hope had been fanned, and soon they might grow into an inferno. I think uh, that was supposed to be, because um, initially uh, the Ukrainian content update was going to come with Polish content, so I think this was uh, supposed to be something was going to happen in Poland. That would have probably like an assassination attempt on uh, Hans Frank, but it was never added, and Polish content still. Uh, from what I've heard, the team has collapsed, so far away, unfortunately. Very far away. But we walked eggshells. Let's now, uh, let's get the unavoidable. We'll get poison in the air. Uh, Europe careens towards disaster. It's not uh, just us. Every facet of the Reich has struggled in the wake of our Fuhrer's demise. Moscow's death has been set in motion. Polish dissidents appear ready to spill over any moment. Germany may soon fail, fall prey to its own Darwinistic excesses. Yet, even if all of them make miraculous recoveries, one thing is clear, none of them are going to save us. We must free ourselves from our delusion. Um, a great battle is coming, and our goal, our only goal, is to uh, make sure we survive. It's a subtle shift in policy, yet once a seismic change, no longer can we imagine a rosy future where the criminal class of Ukraine succumbs to reason. Partisans around us, our only goal is to stomp them down until have no more strength to fight. Um, and this will lock down strongholds. It's now going to be available in the breadbasket and then the aforementioned event. But uh, this is a little weird because honestly, fear is still alive. So. I, I think there's supposed to probably be like a couple more focuses in between this because we're, uh, we're a couple months early before everything kicks off. But I'll see you guys once we get this event. Okay, we got this event, Ruby's in the Rough. In defiance of his uh, legs protest, Bodin pressed on through the fields. The pain in his stomach far outweighed that in his limbs, even after hours of walking and burying friends. The full moon provided its gentle silver glow, painting the wheat gray. 
The light glinted off of grain silos and warehouses, turning them into frosted silhouettes. He noted a dormant tractor. He passed many that day. The countryside was all tools, no people, and plastered with the name of German companies. The tractor uh, was safe from its, this fate. It's its makes showing a predated occupation. Had he founded the solitary family farm in these corporate plains, his uh, aching stomach twisted like a vice. A family farm meant a farmhouse, a farmhouse meant a garden, and a garden meant real food rather than just endless grain. He moved further up the road, spotting a home. His hopes fell when he reached a German sign at the edge of the property. Bowden in turn, clenching his fist, he'd have to find another garden. Looking around, he only saw storehouses. He faced the house again, noting the tomato vines away into the perimeter. His gut churned, spurning his feet into action as he inched forward. He crawled through the farm like a pest, his heart pounding. Eventually, he found a clutch of ruby-red tomatoes and uh, shoved them giddily into his pocket. Then a light flicked on inside. He saw the shadow of a man with a rifle and immediately stood up, breaking into an agonizing sprint. A flashlight cut through the dark, just missing Bodan as he tumbled over a short fence, sprawling flat on his stomach in the mud. Re recovering as quickly as he could, he scrambled through the grass until the windows were dark again. He fell onto his back, now caked thoroughly with muck. His breath quieted, he stared at the ink uh, black sky, waiting for the stars to stop spinning. Gingerly, he retrieved a surprisingly pristine tomato from his coat. Shivering, he took a bite of the best tomato he had ever tasted. Perhaps he was lucky after all. Okay, we got the unavoidable, now we have poison in the air. The right from this route will soon fall apart. This is the direct result of absences of reforms and changes to the system. With every month, the number of partisan attacks on military civilian infrastructure increases. The only wise decision is to expand uh, the garrison's budget drastically. The amount of garrison sent to the right declines, resulting in less help coming from Germania. If we act now, if we want to succeed in realizing our dearest fear's dream for the eastern lands, those are the type of talks you hear now uh, in the daily in the halls of the Kiev administrative buildings. Recently, the situation in Ukraine became less and less manageable, resulting in rising discontent among officials and rumors regarding inefficient governing, with uh, some even suggesting the soon collapse of the Reich from this route. Along with that, infighting among various factions of the German government in Ukraine had also seen a drastic increase, leading to a more heated power struggle within the colony. With their concerns may be a big overreaction to controllable problems, it is an undeniable fact that the stability the Nazi rule over Ukraine become much, much more weaker. If the current state of things shall not be challenged uh, shortly, the uh, change shortly, the prospects of the Reich from threat can worsen drastically. End of the report on the security status in RK Ukraine. Well, that's not good. Uh, let's now uh, let's take war, no matter the cost. The survival of the state is the important task left to the Reich from threat. The welfare of their populace will surely be ruined by an all-out civil war. Whatever we can trade from them is far less than what Bolsheviks or deluded extremism. Extremists will do if given the chance. Thus, we shall take the comp group will cross the nation, finding material to force into our war machine. Many powerful men will be angry, furious even. But there are fewer, uh, few options left. And I'll see you guys once we get that. Okay, we gotta take more no matter the cost. Uh, let's now do more of everything all the time. We'll get more of everything all the time for the event. But it may be true that there comes a limit to what we can take. We have squeezed all we can out of Germany. It may simply have no more to give. Luckily, our creativity is an asset with no such limitations. If we cannot get our firepower through smuggling or stealing, then it shall come from us, our own hands, and our own factories. We will build these things uh, with whatever we can manage and whoever we can find. Temporary weapon production studios will be placed across whatever territory we might uh, find some control, hoping to build enough supplies before a German boot comes to crash uh, them. Even as we exhaust uh, the blast of our uh, supplies, we'll have a way of getting more. And this will increase desolation, increase our liquid reserves, and then increase our infantry equipment. But I'll see you guys once we get that. Okay, we got this event, Charity is Dead. The farmhouse was a site for Bowden sword eyes, uh, as well as the sore arms, sore stomachs, sore legs, and sore back. The tomatoes, divided as they had been, hadn't lasted more than a few hours before his gut was pleading for him to find something substantial. He felt that he was in luck, however, as the warehouse and uh, silos had begun to give way to humble if somewhat desolate homes. Most importantly, they seemed to be Ukrainian homes from the occasional sign on the side of the road. So Bowden approached the one before him in, in hopes of charity. He took a deep breath as he was preparing to plead his case to the Reaper. He tried to make himself presentable, but there wasn't much to do. Every inch of him was muddy, uh, bloody, or grass-stained. He tried to pat his wild hair down and button his coat, although in the process he realized a few had come off and wrapped uh, uh, 
hold on. Uh, then wrapped his bruised knuckles against the door. His uh, heart pounded for several uh, seconds. He brushed his hair uh, back once again. Slowly dur the door crept open and the bespectacled face of old man emerged. Yes, he asked in a soft yet defeated tone. His left eyebrow arched as he observed the state of the ex-partisan. It occurred to Bolden that he had even thought of what uh, to say. Hunger clouded his mind as he stumbled for the next word. Good afternoon, sir. I've been walking for you past several days. My home was burned in a German raid. I have no food or a place to sleep. I'm sorry, young man, but we barely got any to spare for ourselves. The agent man replied, Please, I can work on your farm. I can sleep outside. He pleaded as the man began to close his door. Please don't. Bolden scrambled for some hot part of field nationalism that he simply didn't have. We have to stick together. Suddenly, the, wor the world felt colder for Bolden as the door felt shut uh, for Ukraine. On to the next. And I'll see you guys once we get more of everything all the time. Okay, we have more of everything all the time. Eora felt a crack of pain in his shoulders. He hefted up another hunk of metal to feed the abomination before him. The assembly line, barely visible in the poor lighting of the factory, and Eora's blurry vision was like the gnashing gnaw of a steel giant, devouring material and sweat and spitting out bullets. The giant roared in heavy clangs, agonizing groans and metallic grinding. Its breath reeked of blood and cinders. Eora stepped to hold his aching shoulder, biting his dry, cracking uh, lips. Hey, back to work, barked the foreman from a catwalk unseen. Eor complied with gritted and rotten teeth. There has to be a numbered, numbers error, muttered the supervisor from his desk chair in the office, nestled safely in the far corner of the building. He was looking over the newsletter sent for the higher-ups. No, sir, I called the offices. They want a 50% increase, replied the aide standing before the supervisor's desk. Eor loaded another hunk of metal, his grunts of pain coming out scratchy from his blisteringly dry throat. He tried to make sense of the time, which blurred together like a fever nightmare, and pleaded to God voicelessly that he could have his nightly sip of water soon. Um... That's impossible. We're already working well beyond our means. This place will start falling apart. On whose authority? I bet they're trying to intimidate us. That's it, ranted the supervisor. In the factory room, the foreman was checking the time for when he, he'd deal out the workers' paltry rations. The SS, sir, murmured the aide as he was afraid the very word would summon them. The supervisor paled as they had. Somewhere on the line, a dehydrated worker named Eor collapsed in a heap. Tell the foreman no breaks or rations until quotas met. And uh, let's now get... Uh, Dial up the other brat again, and we're gonna call for help. But the Reich has abandoned us. It is hurtful to frame the cruelty of our leader so bluntly, but it is the truth we must accept. Their lines and munitions run thinner and thinner by the day, dropping below even our dimmest projections on what they can offer. Uh, while we uh, can't ascertain their reasoning, we are certain that their meager offerings will soon not be enough to stem the tide. However, our men on the inside might be able to propel us a little further. And Zoto Brautigam's uncle is actually a respected diplomat in Germania. Uh, while armaments are certainly not his department, he might be able to pull a few strings and get us a little more. It won't be much, but it will be a lifeline. At this point, we could take what uh, we could take what we can get, and this will secure one more infantry division when the civil war breaks out. But I'll see you guys once we get that. Okay, we got a call for help. Hanzo de Bredegam felt the drops of sweat. Uh, coming down his spine as he grabbed his phone because, after all, his career might depend on the call he was about to make, a call to his uncle, Germania. It was true that the Reichsmiss route was in a rather difficult situation, so if calling for help would only be smart, for without it, all of his efforts to challenge for uh, to change Ukraine would be useless. As he started to dial up the number, he just prayed that there would be something other than silence on the other end of the line. Around a week later, he was walking towards the halls of one of the administrative buildings and came on a cozy evening. He was again uh, thinking about his current position. The call then uh, changed much, of course, and helped it arrive, uh, but it was only token assistance, just the needed minimum. It was enough to improve the Reich's misery, but the right amount to stay afloat. It was an achievement, no, but it was better than nothing. Other than some aid from the Metropole, he, he, the call had other, more productive results. For the past few days, the negotiate, negotiations between Bradigan and the other administrators had gone surprisingly smoothly, and even the most stubborn officials were willing to work out deals with them. Of course, Bradigan was an idiot. He quickly released, realized that the call made him uh, more respected. After all, it's nice to see someone who, does, who actually does work, right? Just as he was thinking about that, he decided to stop by a big window from the uh, from which the spectacular view of Kiev opened up. He loved the place for some reason. It meant something special to him, and stopping by every time he was in the building felt like a must, especially on evenings like this one. Uh, then, to his pleasant surprise, he noticed something new. Kiev's li lights became slightly brighter. It's the 12th of August, so uh, two months until the Civil War begins, but let's do last calls. 
Uh, Ukraine must now be exhausted. Black markets can be called up. Moscow smuggling rings can be activated. Whatever we need, whatever we can, we must ring our government dry for connections, for wealth, for ideas, anything that can get us another gun. Another bullet is worth it. Nothing is too small, nothing is too risky. We are deep within a pit and we can pull in as many guns uh, with us as our fingers can reach. We can, uh, we are long past shovels. The only way we can escape uh, if, is if the hole fills with blood. And we have a lot, this will add a lot more equipment to our stockpiles. And after that, we'll do high time to steal oneself. But I'll see you guys once we finish last calls. Okay, we got last calls. Let's now uh, get high time to steal oneself. That will be the title of today's video. It's a cool like slogan. It all ends tomorrow. The conclusion of the police and guards fight is one is one last battle. A struggle for life and death that may spell the end for the Ukrainian people. There's no planning left, nor even organizing. The operation is over. The battle will now begin. Instead, we steal ourselves. We look over our work and see that it's complete. We see our armies uh, standing calmly in a sturdy lockstep. We see our weapons piled as high as we need. We see our allies all standing at our side or cowering with assorted devils. We see the cards we've been dealt and can at least understand the odds of our survival. Uh, can at last understand the odds of our survival. In this moment, uh, it seems we have a chance. We'll get the event last calls. Uh, I think that was supposed to go with this event because literally it shares the same name. But uh, no matter. I'll see you guys once we uh, get it. Then after that, I'll make a pause. I'll resume once the Civil War begins. Okay, we have an event not related to Ukraine or Great Britain, but to Kazakhstan. As you may notice, the Kazakh warlords are gone, and we now have the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic under uh, Dimkanid. But chaos at the 12th part Kazakh Party Congress. Historically, Kazakhstan's, uh, Kazakhstan's Party Congress has been little more than a rubber stamp for uh, president and policy. Instead, the 12th Party Congress saw chaos as an anti-fascist, uh, anti-party faction attempted to unseat the sitting first secretary to no avail. Uh, instead, the Party con Congress saw Secretary Konev consolidate power within his own base, yet to maintain his position and prevent his removal. Konev uh, uh, appears to re have relied on the community of Kazakh Gukurinist, a group which was isolated and sidelined during the predecessor's administration. Whatever follows for, for, whatever follows for Kazakhstan is clear that it will be a marked uh, departure, departure from its Marxist-Leninist past. Uh, Shemak Matov's era takes its place. And I'll see you guys once we get high time to steal oneself. Okay, we got last calls. Otto Ollendorf took a slow, steady step as he inspected the soldiers of one of the Reichsmissrit's finest SS units. The men were tall, strong, and fit, and the weapons were in good condition. There were uh, no unnecessary emotions, only a sense of loyalty and dedication. Everything seemed perfect, yet something was rather well, something was unsettling Ollendorf. It wasn't something about the combatants, rather it was a sense of fear. He never allowed fear to take control, but now it was almost overpowering, and now without reason. Odo felt that something significant was approaching, uh, something big, and he didn't know what that would be. He despised when he couldn't predict what was coming next, as it left him with his only silent prayers to himself, not something he trusted much. George Lamont crossed out another phone number on his list. He called every high, he called each high-ranking official, officer, and businessman, anyone willing to talk. The rash from his heart day by day was displaying more signs of instability and chaos. Lebrant needed all the men, he, all the help to salvage the system from collapsing. Despite always hearing reassurance and support deep inside, George knew that it wasn't enough. The clock was ticking, time was running out, and the news was tightening. And so to again returned home after an interview with the reports. Uh, reporters from the Ukrainian newspaper led to the German administration. It was the first interview and surprisingly it went quite well. The reason they never participated in such press engagements, even though the newspaper had always been loyal to the regime, was simple. Why bother? In this land, the rule is force and bureaucracy. Every time it changed, the price of people's support has drastically increased. Bradigan only hoped that it was for the best. It's coming down. With that, I'll see you guys. I think our next event will probably be right after Hitler dies. But I don't know. I, I don't really remember. There's probably going to be a couple more events leading up. But nevertheless, we'll see them if they come. And if not, we'll probably have the Civil War begin. The next episode, we'll fight it. Okay, we have the event Respite. Uh, respite, not Respite. But you can also see Germany is no longer united. Bodan dipped his head into the creek. The cold water stung. There was relief and the pain. He pulled his head free and watched the muck and blood slip downstream. The feeling of cleanliness was liberating, but he 
uh, still could not help the worrying that there was a gun trained at his back. He began moving back to the tree where he'd laid his coat to dry. His vendor wiped his face with his sleeve. Birds fled the field of the glade as the sound of rumbling engines. He hunched down, hoping the sparse canopy above him and the slope of the hill beyond the stream would shield him. His hand crept towards the pistol at his hip. The roar grew louder, heavier, and fiercer. But between the branches and over the hills, Bowden saw a military truck grinding down the road, fast with the macabre held the roof. Hell, heraldry of the Reich. Uh, the sight alone was enough for him to draw his weapon free and press his helmet against the boulder. The bounding of his heart uh, turned the cacophony of a mechani mechanical noise. For minutes he listened. He hazarded a glance beyond the rock, uh, allowing himself to stand his full height and see more than a dozen trucks and armored cars on the move. He knew there was, he was quite the public enemy, but surely they were not sending that much against the fugitive. His question was answered as they passed him in the same way they the rest of the countryside, he fell back behind the stone, mortal fear receding in the fear face of confusion. He let the nose, noise fade before slipping out, uh, inching toward the hill. He winced as he left safety and came to the full view of the road. A few hundred feet ahead was the last of the largest Wehrmacht convoy he'd seen in years, moving with urgency towards the horizon. He breathed a sigh of cautious relief and slid back down. Uh, putting away his gun, and he noted that his hands were shaking. The only thing that shocked him more than at this moment, when he'd spent years preparing for, was what he had no idea what to do. War has finally come. With that, I'll end this episode, because next time, I want to resume and fight the Civil War. But I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.